The autumn wind is a league, holding the treasures ye may seek. Have some fun and play along, whether for a day or for a week. Seek advice from a sage, or battle straight up. Square off in a cage, or joust without a cup. It's a FanDuel. Is it your favorite you take, or make the logical play? Will your foe stand before you and quiver and quake, as you will be crowned prince for a day? The autumn wind may be a casual player, fan-dueling just to talk trash. But there will be those that will play that will be able to say, I've got my hands on some cold, hard cash. Hello and welcome to the Box Scores FanDuel Draft Day. I'm Brock in Los Angeles from our very own Red Zone set. They are the Danettes in the Big Apple, of course, from the Fantasy Zone Lounge. Week five is here, and the Danettes are ready for another action-packed week of fantasy football. McLovin, you were the self-proclaimed guru coming into this contest, but which Danettes performance has been the most surprising this season? I don't know if I ever proclaimed myself a guru. I think the world proclaimed me the guru. Hmm. Uh, Seton, I think, has been on top most often. Um, Todd has been sneaky second place, -ish, exactly as I expected. Paulie's been a little more erratic than I expected. I erratic is another word for bad. Mm, uh, that was I a kind of. Is that a synonym for suck? That all was over kind. The map. Yeah. So. I no, get but it. to be erratic, though, you have to have some good moments too. But I haven't. So how, no, how, I that Todd is aware of that, by the way. <laughs> I think Todd was, that was a shot. Was shot that a shot? Ball. I wasn't meant to that be a shot. That was a fantasy But if you shot. call him, if you call him a, erratic would mean sometimes you're at the top, sometimes you're at the bottom. You know, if you're just kind of like in the middle or the bottom, I don't know how erratic. I know what erratic is. means, Todd. That was a shot. Yeah, <laughs> let's, <laughs> he went to Dartmouth, for God's sakes. All right, let's take a look at our official That's standings true. from week four. <laughs> the boss started from the bottom. Now he's here. DP took the top spot amongst everyone in the man cave, followed by McLovin, Pauly, Seton, and Fritzy bringing up the rear. Uh, Seton, whose uh, finish was the most surprising last week? I mean, the boss finishing first or Fritzy finishing last? Well, you know, with all due respect to Dan finishing first, I'm not actually going to put a lot of uh, like stock or credit in it because it's not like he actually had a good performance. I feel like everybody had a bad week. Mm. So, it, you know, he only finished with like 107 so points or something. he was the best of a bunch of bad teams. In other weeks, he would have been in like third or fourth with but that I think finish. So he was, yeah, he was the best yeah. of the bad but teams. But everybody was down across the board this week. So right. we're not big quarterbacks for yeah. it. So I think it doesn't matter. But you can't be down yeah. in rankings. You know, no, like yeah. our rankings were low. But his ranking was good. He got money. He got 20 bucks. His ranking was like, yeah. the ironic part. I yeah. didn't really want to bring this up. I feel like that's yeah. more of a fluke than it. I was, I was in second place this week. My ranking was radically low <laughs> out of our 2,000 person group. And I was in second, but I was still bragging about it all day long. Own it. All right. Yeah. All right. Last week was certainly an interesting one on the gridiron. And now it's time to recap it all. So I will let my colleagues break it all down. Starting off with Polly and his finger licking good picking. If you watched Hard Knocks like I did, I saw a little Devonta Freeman. And, uh, you know, he had a big week last week. 35 points for the Falcons. 68 rushing yards is not huge, but then three touchdowns. 81 reception yards. I would bet that almost everybody picks him this week. Phillip Rivers, 358, three touchdowns, 26 points. That's classic early season. Phil Rivers puts up a lot of stuff, then doesn't do much in the postseason. A little bonus oh, for you, snap. Fritzy. I like that. Le'Veon <laughs> Bell, this is why he was one of the top picks in every league. 129 rushing yards. One touchdown, only 21 yards receiving with seven receptions. So targeting is huge. Mm -hmm. The number of yards is not that big of a deal because he's still going to get the ball a truckload. D'Angelo Williams, I feel bad for that guy because he is gone. It, hmm. it good. Over to you, Fritzy. One player I thought would produce big last week was Carlos Hyde, Niners running back. Mistakenly started him in week four. Just total disaster. Uh, Niners' struggles must have affected him and uh, rubbed off on him in a very bad way. I really thought uh, I had a little hidden gem there. Finished with only 20 rushing yards, couldn't even find the end zone. Finished with 2.7 fantasy points. That's not going to get it done. By the way, I also had Ryan Matthews, who gave me a grand total of zero points uh, as my other running back. Julio Jones, a receiver who had been hot all year, decided to be a no-show last Sunday. Minimal production. Four catches, 38 yards. Could not find his way mm. into the end zone. No scores. Carlos Hyde, Julio Jones, anything but sexy pickups last week. 
Now it's time for Seton O'Connor with his breakthrough rock song. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me tell you about a guy named Tavon Mothergrabbin Austin. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of him. You've been waiting for this one. Yeah! My guy, <laughs> man. Boy. He's finally coming to life a West little Virginia. bit. All right, so yeah, I root for West Virginia guys. I do. But I really f felt like Tavon Austin was going to be something special in the NFL. He's not quite there yet, but he's having a much better season, uh, a breakthrough season, if you will. But six receptions, 96 yards, two touchdowns, 20 rushing yards, gave you almost 27 points. I'm happy for my guy, man. Attaboy, Tavon. Could have gone Gino breakthrough a jaw season. Oh, oh that what? is mean spirited, That's Andrew not cool. Perloff. That's not cool. It's time for you to throw to something. Okay, his jaw broken. Here's uh, McLovin. Speaking of breaking things, how about a system? Maybe a system breaking quarterback. Wow, wow that's a toss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That just happened. <laughs> okay, I'm going with who's supposed to be the ultimate system quarterback, but he really hasn't been. Sam Bradford, the Philadelphia Eagles. Classic second half out of nowhere, sort of garbage time. He points last week. He wasn't doing anything. Then he went back, hit Riley Cooper for a long touchdown, and brought in the points. That's the thing about Sam Bradford. He can stink for a half, and then he can all of a sudden get you 25 points in the second half. Can explode at any given moment. Any given Much moment, like any given Sunday. All right. <laughs> Solid breakdown there from the guys. Wow. And sorry about that, Carlos uh, Hyde pickup there last week, Fritzy. That's a tough one. Don't go away. It's yeah, time for the guys to uh, reveal their lineups for week five. And remember, in every fantasy truck draft, the Ram 15 Eco Diesel, 1500 Eco Diesel is going number one. This bad boy can climb a hill, haul a trailer, and is a rock star every day of the week. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts, glory, Ram. Welcome back uh, to the Box Scores FanDuel Draft Day. It is time to get ready for week five, but first let's reveal the Danitz challenge for this week. McLovin, lay it on us. Okay, it's an easy one. It's uh, a player who was in Fritzy's Bar Mitzvah video, so it's basically anyone who's ever been a pro bowler in the NFL <laughs> was open for this discussion. Nice. All right. Uh, hey, Seaton, with all the drama around kickers these days, uh, are we ever going to get a challenge that is kicker related to shake things up? Wow, that's a good idea. Uh, we should actually think that's about doing a great kicker one because that is usually one of those, all right, well, I got like four grand. Who's the cheapest kicker I could possibly get? I, I almost always go that <laughs> route. That'd be fun. And maybe a, a kicker that even made the, the bar mitzvah video. All right, let's see who the Danettes are going with in week five. So let's start with the man whose bar mitzvah video took the world by storm. Fritzy, give us your team for this week. All right, I went Eli Manning as my quarterback against the uh, lowly 49ers for, uh, for Sunday night. Uh, I was almost going to lean towards uh, doing something with Breeze or Matt Ryan, but I just have a good feeling about Eli. Uh, Devonta Freeman, uh, Falcons, Redskins. Hopefully he'll have a, uh, another big game, but uh, my luck, he'll probably end up uh, falling flat on his face after a huge game last week. Doug Martin, Buccaneers, Jaguars. I'm feeling good about that one. I don't know why, but I uh, had to save a couple of bucks, so I went uh, nothing against Doug Martin, but he was a little cheaper on the running back side. And I think he's going to do well against the Jaguars. Emmanuel Sanders in the big Bronco Raider game against the Silver and Black in Emmanuel, Oakland. Emmanuel, that's no doubt for you. Yeah, for Emmanuel. <laughs> Emmanuel 5, Emmanuel, Emmanuel 5 7. in space. So I, I didn't know whether, I don't know what Seaton and I were talking about. I didn't know whether to go him or Demarius Thomas. But Emmanuel Sanders for the Broncos. It's funny, Raiders. the announcer said Emmanuel's great in space the other day. Now I know what he's talking about. Now that. you know. So that was like a little shout out to me, I think. Antonio Brown, Pittsburgh, San Diego, Monday night. My second of three wide receivers. Go Antonio. James Jones, Packers, Car Packers, Rams in St. Louis. I like James Jones in that game. Uh, Charles Clay I'm going with. Bills uh, against the Titans as my uh, tight end. Sebastian Janikowski. That was a tough one since he's playing against the Broncos. But hopefully the Denver defense will... Uh, Keep him uh, trying for long field goals. And I've got the Orange Crush, which I think another man in this panel also is going with the Denver Bronco defense. Well, Fritzy, you spent a big money on Antonio Brown. Is he your uh, sure thing for this week? I hope so, because I really don't feel that strongly about any of these guys. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to go, uh, based on what I was looking at, I, th I think I have a, a decent team. I hope after going second place, second place, second place, last place, that I can get back uh, back towards you the top. You would love to get a nice third place finish to really feel if better about yourself. If I can get second or third place, that'll be all right. But Just eventually, I'll all get at least even one first place. But yeah, Antonio Brown, hopefully Antonio Brown will be worth the uh, worth the, the extra money. All right, on to the man who's climbing the ranks week by week. Polly, break down your lineup for us. 
Well, as you put up the graphic of my lineup, I will be finding out my lineup because my strategy this Excellent. week is I set a, a value for each position. And as I set the value, I put a, a notebook up on the screen and just picked the highest value I could afford at any position without looking at the matchup, the player, anything that they had done. So looking at my team, I got uh, Sam Bradford. Looks like uh, Todd Gurley. Wow, that's great. Uh, I got another running back. Yeldon? Uh, uh, Yeldon? Ooh, Yeldon, former Alabama running back. Hmm. A.J. Green, Cobb from the Packers, Johnson from the Lions, wow. Mart uh, Martellus Bennett, and a, a kicker from the Jaguars whose name I still don't Jay know. Jay Maskus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my experiment this week was um, I, I set myself a value for each position mm. that I would try to keep it under. And then when I got done with that, I went the max I could afford at each position, running back, wide receiver, quarterback, tight now, end. Do you have any proof this strategy actually, and you just happened to get great home matchups and the hottest players at every position? I took a notebook <laughs> and I put it over the screen. Mm -hmm. And I, I took the highest I thought I could afford without looking at the matchup, the points from that guy in the last week, or anything, all I looked at was the number. So you got the highest performing tight end for last week, the highest performing quarterback, two of the highest performing wide receivers. It's a good system. Right. Well, but if you look at my defense and my kicker, I went as low as I could. I even I don't and and try to save as much money. And I maxed out. I think I have no so money. You didn't left. See any but of the now, players. to be fair though, he BS did take a BS. horrible Bears defense. So that would point to no, no, no. Bears defense. They're like they're top. 10. I would say porous. But Seton, I think was. I would next describe week. them as porous. I'm the pretty Bears sure Seton was stingy. Porous defense. Porous. I like that. One. I'm almost sure Seton was sitting <laughs> next to me when I did it, and he might have seen me holding the piece of paper up to my Possible. screen. I don't know. Uh, Paul, is this a technique that you will uh, use in the future? Um, going in with no idea what I'm doing has worked for me since birth, and I'm going to try it out here on FanDuel. <laughs> okay, we've got two lineups set. And uh, remember, if you want to uh, play one week fantasy football against Dan and the Danettes, just go to fanduel.com slash Patrick and enter the promo code Patrick for a 100% deposit match up to $200 on new accounts. $5 to enter and winners get instant cash as soon as the contest ends. That's FanDuel, the leader in one day fantasy sports. Stick around, two down, three more to go. We'll break down the rest of the guys' lineups for week five in the Dan Duel League. We're back here on the box scores FanDuel Draft Day. Seton, you and McLovin are the only two Danettes to come out on top in the man cave so far this season. Between the two of you, who's going to have the most first place finishes? Man, that's tough. Uh, the expert, I like to refer to us as the experts. Uh, we're going to start a podcast. Like we're like Morton Schefter. Right, that's basically the equivalent. The debate is who, who gets to be Schefter at the end of the year and who has to be Mort. Man, well, nothing I, against I don't Mort. Want, yeah, nothing against Mort, but I don't want to be Mort. <laughs> well, you um, can't be. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go the Schefter role. I don't know. I mean, I, if I'm speaking honestly, I feel like I luck into uh, all of these things because mm -hmm. I have the strategy for my picks, but the truth is I really don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, and Andrew, though, I think overthinks things. Yep. And yep. he is the guy who does his lineup five different times and then changes it again because he just can't, I have to have AJ <laughs> or whatever. Oh. So I think that really works. I, I'd rather be lucky than good uh, any day. I think All right, so. well, let's see if luck can outdo smarts and goodness. Uh, seat in your lineup, please. All right, I took Drew Brees, uh, not only because he led off Fritzy's uh, video, I think he was the first guy <laughs> right. we saw, but I like the matchup against the Eagles. Uh, also, at running back, I took Mark Ingram, uh, also for those same reasons. Uh, I took Le'Veon Bell. Uh, I think the Chargers give up a bunch of rushing yards, and um, still with Mike Vick at quarterback, I expect him to get a lot of touches. I took Sir Lawrence Fitzgerald. I took Pierre Garçon. Uh, I took... A fellow by the name of Kendall Wright who plays for the Titans, I think he could have a big week. That's like my one, uh, that's, yeah, a fella by the name of Kendall. Kendall uh, I think that he he's like my risky pick where I'm like, all Google right, him. wow, this could be interesting. Yeah, Google him, wow. check it out. Uh, like Paulie, I've got Martellus Bennett um, because he could, I don't know, maybe get a lot of points this week, I guess. <laughs> Uh, my kicker is a guy named Cairo Santos because I feel like the Chiefs put up a lot of field goals and I took the orange crush for Fritzy again. Uh, Broncos against Oakland. Yeah, man. Hell no. Crush the silver. Hell All right. No. Well, Seton, you're spending big money on running backs this week. If this tactic pays off, will this be your plan of attack every week or are you just going to continue to shake things up? So far, my plan of attack has been somebody and Danny Woodhead. And that <laughs> sort of works out. Like, all right, I'll take one guy and then Danny Woodhead because he always gives you like 15 points. 
Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's really a week by week uh, process with me. I'm not giving away all of my strategy. The magic. Yeah, I can't give yes. away the magic here. Keep the cards close no to the chest. All right, McLovin uh, bounced back last week after a uh, rough couple of weeks. Let's see if he can keep the momentum going with his lineup for week five. McLovin, let's have it. Okay, I started out uh, Eli because I liked his performance in the bar mitzvah video. Uh, I honestly <laughs> don't think he's going to do anything for me this week, but uh, I'm running back Jamal Charles versus the Bears. I feel like this is a game where they're going to run a lot. Um, Justin Forsett against Cleveland's porous run defense. Porous. I keep reading that porous. everywhere. Porous. Everyone on earth has Forsett. He's the most played person on the planet this weekend. Demarius Thomas, you know what it was? <laughs> The last time I saw Demarius, he just grabs those 16-yard passes know. and he goes to the pulled, house. I'm like, I'm sick of what? Get it out there, 16 uh, yards? I'm sick of what? Yeah, but that's all you do. I, just sort of I, little lot of lollipop. Demarius grabs them. Yeah. I were talking about that. I went Sanders because it like, seems like yeah. you could just a flip of a coin. So then I really wanted Keenan Allen at 7,700, but I couldn't fit him in, so I took Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> How can we all don't take Larry Fitzgerald every week? Good guy, high points. We all like him. Good guy. Uh, Terrence Williams <laughs> had a lot of targets last week. Hopefully get some garbage points if they're getting blown out by the Patriots. Uh, Antonio Gates, everyone knows the Chargers receivers are all banged up. Gates comes back from suspension, so I'm hoping he picks up. Him and Allen are the only guys healthy in that whole lineup. So I hope he gets a lot of points. Cairo Santos, seven field goals last week. There's no way he can do it again, right? Let's hope so. Yeah. And here's an interesting one. Let me know what you guys think. The Buccaneers defense was only $4,000. Yes. They're playing Jacksonville. Yes. Bortles maybe give it up. It was the cheapest defense. I was I, looking at that. That's I like a great Paulie's, call. I like Paulie's idea of not spending on defense because I spent last week on the Seahawks and it's burning. Right. So that's that's really one of my risky That's affairs. a good call. Well, McLovin, our yeah, producers got their loose. hands on an early up. draft of your lineup, but you have made some big yeah. changes. Recap those for us. Yes. Well, I... I fell in love with Devontae Freeman like everybody else. I fell in hard love with Todd Gurley like everybody else. <laughs> but, hard love. But then somebody told me Antonio Gates. They're like, you got to get Gates because everyone's injured in San Diego. And just like a random person on the street telling me that is enough to like throw my whole life into chaos. <laughs> so I ripped apart my team. I started all over again. I also had Breeze at one point. I had Matt Ryan at one point. I had 50 different teams. <laughs> Brock, do you think you could and have the producers out there uh, get a hold of McLovin's first draft? And compare the points yeah. of the first draft yes. team to the points of his actual team uh, when we review who would next you, week. Who would you bet on, Polly? Absolutely. I we will put the, the right people wins. on that. Yeah. yeah. Right people for an important That would be a job. great experiment. Yes, of course. All right, don't go away. DP finished on top last week. So let's see if the lineup he's bringing to the table can do it again. But first, uh, we're going to take a break and remind you that the Ram Heavy Duty, with its best-in-class towing torque and horsepower, doesn't need one. Guts. Glory Ram. We are closing up shop here on the Box Scores FanDuel Draft Day. And don't forget you, that's right, you can also take on Dan in the Dan Edson Weekly Fantasy Football. Just go to FanDuel.com slash Patrick and enter the promo code Patrick for a 100% deposit match up to $200 on new accounts. $5 to enter and winners get instant cash as soon as contest ends. Dan Patrick took the top spot in the man cave last week. I mean, do we have any idea, you guys, on what his strategy is or is it just pure luck? You know, I don't know if Dan has a philosophy that he goes into his picks with, unless you guys have seen something differently. I've never seen him grinding. That being said, I've noticed lately, especially in the past year, that Dan is emailing story ideas for the show. Yes. He had his own email at home, which is a radical change from the first 11 years I worked with Dan. Hmm. And uh, I wonder if Dan's doing some home grinding on the computer. Okay, now here's another interesting thing that I've caught Dan saying a couple of times, too, including this week. Dan is uh, famously or notoriously not on Twitter, not Facebook, whatever. But then he'll come in and he'll be like, hey, Paulie, I noticed on Twitter you yeah. were going off on something last night. Yeah. I was like, what's, dude, what's what? going on with that? You saw on Twitter? I know. What the hell is that all about? So funny. he's clearly leaving like a separate, you know, internet. Well, I wonder if he's, he's got like, something going on. I wonder if he's like a social media monitor, mm -hmm. but he doesn't put forth anything. Do you but think he has like a fake name? Or do you think he just does like? No, but I, I think I think what Paul said is he's monitoring and curious to see what people are saying, but he just isn't ready to dive in. That's and, not a good thing. Pandatric. Pandatric at Twitter.org. Yeah. yeah, we need to investigate that. But first, let's find out who the boss is going with this week. It's time for boss's thoughts. You know, when you're great at FanDuel, they make these things for you. So it's sort of like, in lieu of a trophy or money, they 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 did this for me. 
Um, I've got Eli Manning, Eddie Lacy, uh, Dion Lewis with the Patriots. Uh, Rex Ryan didn't know who he was. He'll know who he is now. Julian Edelman. Uh, let me see. Julio Jones. Uh, Ruben Randall. I'm really loading up, expecting the Giants to be good. Uh, let me see who else. Delaney Walker and Sebastian Janikowski, who looks like Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins. That's it. That's a winner, and maybe you'll get one of these made for you. <laughs> I like the uh, Janikowski pick against the uh, Bronco defense, where he's going to hopefully be held to uh, trying to kick 50-plus yard field goals. But are 50-plus uh, yard field goals worth more? I think so, yeah. I think I'll look so another point. Is that a bad thing? No. Jack Cassie's good. Is he no, I picked Jack Cassie. I think he's going to get. To, I'm just. Uh, I'm just from a Bronco fan standpoint. I'm hoping that they just have a couple of field goals oh, and stay out of the end. Field goals, got it. But um, that I don't know. That's screaming, and uh, I'm no expert, as we all know. And I just came in last place. I'm going to say that screams right in the middle. That's like a very strong third place lineup for Dan. How can you have a strong third place lineup? It's just as strong in that I'm confident that he's going to be wow. literally right strong in the third. middle of things. I don't think it's big enough to win. I don't think it's horrible. I just think. Much like myself, it's very average. Very and average, finish, absolutely. I, I feel really strongly about saying he's going to finish in third place, just outside of fourth place. Seaton, how well do you think the boss is going to do? Uh, I don't think he's going to do well at all, actually. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Um, maybe, I mean, it's tough because he's got two pates on there. So I, I hope he does do well because that would mean that the Patriots have a good game, uh, speaking as a fan. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really feeling his picks, to be honest with you. All right, well, let's get to Paulie real quick. Tell us which Danette comes out on top after week five. Uh, I'm going to go with me because it'd be really funny if with <laughs> using no intellect whatsoever, yeah, well done. I won the contest this week, which would really throw, a, I think, a lot of people into a tizzy. I think McLovin would, in particular, would yes. not be happy with you um, if you finished first. You know, if you could find out a way, as someone once told me, a former guy I work with, if I could find a way to do less mm. work and make a lot of money, Sign me up. <laughs> so this is that theory that in was, practice in FanDuel. And hopefully mistake. I can win the contest. Ooh, boy, I'm very excited. All right, well, it's time for me to pick which dead end I think is going to come out on top. And I'm going with Polly because I completely agree with that philosophy. Less ah, work, you, more Brock. money. All right, Fritzy, tell us who's on the Dan Patrick Show tomorrow. Uh, all right, we will have uh, Kevin Love, Cavaliers forward, will join us. It's been a while. It'll be nice to have him on. Supposedly on Saturday, from what I'm reading, it's going to be participating in his first uh, full practice. So that's a uh, good timing for us having K Love on. And our, our friend Rich Eisen from the NFL Network will uh, join us as well. Fine host of the uh, awesome Rich Eisen Direct Show TV. Audience. Yeah, he's part part of the audience. Yeah, audience network. Right? Yes. TV, now part of the so, uh, family. Rich and Kevin Love so far as part of Friday's show. And of course, doting husband to Susie Schuster and loving father to Xander and Cooper. All right, thanks for watching the Box Score FanDuel Draft Show. Uh, you can watch the Danis make their selections every Thursday right here in audience or via podcast or iTunes or at podcast1.com. Here's my ref shot. Here we go. Right. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you because I probably am. Hey! Thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!